Hey everybody, it's Andrew here at Vespa Portland with a different kind of video today. We're going to be talking about safety. Safety! I know, it's not the sexiest topic in the world, but it's important. We like to see your smiling faces, we like to hear the stories about where you've been riding, and we'd like to continue to see you and hear those stories. What we're going to talk about specifically is something called the Smith System. Now, I didn't make this up. This was invented in the 1950s, and the purpose of it was to keep commercial drivers safe. UPS uses it, so you know it has some clout. And in a former life of mine, I used to work for a big corporation that had its own uh, fleet of delivery drivers. And, you know, the company, of course, spent a lot of money on driver safety. And the system they settled upon was the Smith system. I like it a lot because I think it's a very realistic system. It doesn't uh, require you to drive overly slow or overly defensively. It's just a list of checks you can go through in your mind to keep yourself in a position where you have as much space, visibility, and time uh, as possible so that you can avoid being involved in a major accident. And I've been using this now for 15, 16 years, I think is since I was working at that company uh, doing this particular job. And I still use it all the time. So let's get right to it. The first key to the Smith system is called aim high in steering. Now what that means is, and it's let me get onto a straight road so I can actually explain it a bit, is you want to pick a point as far out ahead of you as you can. I don't know if you can see it in the GoPro, but there's a van at the very top of that hill, and I'm kind of looking around there on a straightaway. Obviously, I'm looking around here too, but keep making sure that I look up every now and then to focus on that spot, and it's harder to do than you might think. You know, this will this whole thing will sound like common sense, but these habits are hard to 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 learn, to to master, and to consistently apply. Um, part of the reason for that, at least in this particular key, keeping your eyes up, is that you're fighting your own physiology. Humans only walk about four miles an hour, so you know how far do you really need to look out ahead of you? The other side of the crosswalk? That's all you really think about when you're a pedestrian. But when you take a human and you put them on a motor vehicle, like a scooter or a car, all of a sudden you're capable of going 40, 60, 80 miles an hour, or faster, and looking that close isn't good anymore because you're traveling at a rate of speed that's going to get you there before you could ever make a decision uh, if something was going wrong, uh, how to handle a situation if something was going wrong. So keeping your eyes up means looking down the road, not directly at the car in front of you. Um, and this has two benefits. The very first one is it'll help you avoid rear-ending people and being rear-ended. If I'm looking at this great Corolla directly ahead of me, uh, and I'm just staring at it, I've only got the distance from where I am to the back of that car to make a choice if something happens. Say that Mercedes right there cuts into the lane and hits their brakes, I have to wait for this person to react, and then I have to react to them, and I don't have a lot of time. If I look further down the road, I might notice that maybe the person in the Mercedes is kind of swerving back and forth. We are downtown. Not everybody lives down here. It's a confusing place for a lot of people. And you know, sometimes people don't know where they're going, so you might get a bunch of last-minute lane changes happening. If I can anticipate that happening, I can adjust my speed or my lane to make sure that I've got time. And I can also communicate to a driver behind me by just flicking the brake or something like that, not really slowing down, but just lighting up the lights so that they know that something is coming. Because chances are the person behind me is also just watching me drive. And I'm talking about looking down the road, I'm talking about looking at where you'll be in about 15 seconds. And you can test this by just picking a point ahead of you and counting. Um, I'm looking at that construction up there on NATO Parkway taking a quick break from the video to point out something I didn't notice when I was riding. And it is that Toyota Corolla uh, that didn't have any clue that there was a semi truck in its lane until roughly 30 feet before it got to it. I'll play the clip again. You can see that the car uh, makes a very last minute lane change with maybe 10 feet to go before it would have actually run into the back of the semi. But I mean, that's a giant vehicle. You should be able to see that a block away, two blocks away, three blocks away but you'll never see anything if you're driving looking down and not paying attention to what is happening down the road. Yeah, there's a real life example for you. People do that all the time. 
and you'll start to see it if you look for it when you're driving your own vehicle. Anyway, back to the video. So now that we're on a straighter road, basically a way you can kind of test this yourself is you can look at a point down the road and see, start counting to yourself, you know, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, if you can get there within 15 seconds or beyond. If you get there a little too close or too fast, well, maybe pick a further away point next time. Looking further down the road too might seem kind of counterintuitive because you might think, well, what do I care about 15 seconds down the road when something might happen right in front of me? Well, you can check this one yourself too, and I'll cut to an example. You're gonna need the help of another person. You stand still, and the other person can put an object out in front of you about 20 to 25 feet away from you. And then that person should continue walking and stand 25-ish feet beyond the object they put down. Now, what you would do is look directly at the object on the ground. Focus on it and have the person ahead of you put a couple of fingers up. If you're focused on the object on the ground 25 feet ahead of you, it is almost impossible for you to simultaneously see how many fingers that person is holding up because you are focused on having your eyes down low. Now, don't move, and now instead look up at the person who is holding up those fingers. You can see now how many fingers they're holding up, but you can also see simultaneously in your field of view that object on the ground. It might not be perfectly in focus, but you can still see it. So by having your eyes up, you're able to have a better view of what is ahead of you, both near and far. The second key to the Smith system is get the big picture. Now, if you're already looking 15 seconds ahead down the road, it's time to start scanning the road ahead of you for other issues. The sides and the rear is what becomes important in this key. By constantly updating your information, you're able to stay alert to the most relevant information happening around you and make those decisions. Now, everyone does this to an extent, obviously, already when they drive. That's why, you know, most people just get to where they're going in uh, good shape. And it's much easier to think through this stuff than it is to vocalize it. But I'll vocalize it here just to kind of give an example of what I'm seeing and what I'm taking in. Obviously, this is, seems a little weird because you'd be doing this mentally. Uh, there's a bunch of cars coming off the freeway to the left of me. And ahead of me, I've got some construction going on. I have a bus pulling out right here that was blocking this intersection that I definitely wanted to scan before I passed it. And I can see that I've got nobody necessarily ahead of me, uh, but I have a green light that's been green for a long time. So this light might change by the time I get to it. Um, I can also check the walk sign. Actually, nope, I'm in good shape. It has 10 seconds left on the walk sign, so I know this green light's gonna stay that way. Um, I could see that there's cars turning, but my lane has no real resistance in it at all. Uh, as we continue going here, we got a car coming up on the right side. Uh, it looks like he took a look at me, didn't pull out in front of me. I'm coming up to a red light, and I can see that there's actually some people at this intersection. There's someone coming out of this shopping center who is not looking at me at all. It's definitely just trying to turn left. So I'm gonna take the safe route here and let him, let him go. Um, I feel like if I had gone, there's a chance that he could have went, went right into the side of me. Uh, going straight into uh, Widler and coming up to 21st, there's a bunch of road construction signs. So obviously something's going to be going on. Maybe there's going to be holes in the ground. Maybe there's going to be potholes. Maybe there's going to be people actively working on the street or some other construction project. So you also have a merge going on. So making sure that no one checking the mirror, no one's coming up on my right side here to take my space. Uh, making the turn. Typical Portland potholes everywhere, but uh, nothing too crazy. So the signs didn't necessarily mean anything bad was going on, but it was a good idea to obviously slow down. Um, I know a lot of this sounds like common sense, but it is simply about taking an active role in your movement. Uh, not just staring at the car in front of you, not just zoning out, looking straight ahead, and not checking these intersections, uh, not looking at lights or other potential hazards, like this car here behind this this, uh, this intersection couldn't see me. Um, you never know if people are going to try to jut out on you. Now we have a green light. Uh, we're going. No pedestrians around, no bicycles, no buses to contend with at the moment. But uh, another thing you can kind of take a look at is cars parked along the side of a road. Take a look at them. 
you know, see if there's signs of life inside those cars. Um, are there people in them? Are the lights on? Is the car on? Is the left wheel, the front left wheel, is it pointed out toward the street as if they're about to come out? Um, can you see people's hands on the wheel? That sort of thing. All those things will give you clues as to whether or not uh, something is about to happen that you might have to react to. Also with Get the Big Picture, uh, it's recommended that you check your mirror every five to eight seconds just to double check what's behind you, what that person's following distance is, and uh, what's going on. And on a scooter or motorcycle, it's, you know, it's real easy too to just actually turn your head, um, which gives you a better view than, than a mirror typically will. So that is key number two, get the big picture. Look around. What is coming? Third key, again, kind of goes right in, uh, in concert with the number two and number one, is keep your eyes moving. Don't focus on one thing and just kind of zone out uh, about you know whatever's going on in your life or your day keep your eyes moving and if that means you need to literally turn your head to do it like I'm doing here then do that but uh, let make sure that you move your eyes every two seconds or so so that you uh, just don't kind of get that driver stare just staring down the road and and missing a lot of things it's also very helpful for a motorcycle or scooter uh, to not stare at things uh, because you will you will ride directly toward them and there's a phenomenon called target fixation that kind of hits people sometimes on turns where if you're not looking through the turn and you're instead looking at a light pole or a mailbox or whatever you might ride directly toward it instead of actually making the turn um, keeping your eyes moving uh, constantly prevents your body from entering a trance-like state and keeps you uh, more alert key number four is to leave yourself an out. Essentially, don't get yourself boxed into a situation. Leave yourself some room ahead of you and to at least one side of you that you can zip into if the need arises. That just gives me the time to avoid a hazard. So that person's going a little slower. So now I've got room ahead of me and I have a full lane on the right side here that I could zip into if I need to, like so to get away from, I don't know, someone running into that car, or that car hitting the brakes hard, or, or whatever it happens to be. In this case, I got a guy who pulled out and going very slow. Um, I've gotten out to my left side, and so I can just leave that scene. This one will show up a bunch if you ride on the freeway, because obviously there's more, more lanes, and chances are you're gonna have people on all sides of you. One cool thing about being on a scooter or a motorcycle is that your space, potentially, is right down the middle of that lane. Now, I'm not saying to lane split, because that's not legal at the time of this video in Oregon. But if a car is coming up on you very quickly and looks like you're gonna get rear-ended and there's a car directly next to you in this lane, I mean, your only option is to go into that spot to avoid getting blasted. So leave yourself an out. Uh, Try to constantly have a space cushion around you. Check your mirror from time to time as you come up to a light, flash your brake uh, to keep get people's attention so that you are not totally blocked in at any given time and you have somewhere to go. First create the space and then know where it is uh, so that you can use it if necessary. Ask yourself periodically, if something went wrong right now, where am I going to go? Uh, that will keep you alert and looking for those spaces. And the final key is key number five which is make sure they see you and this one is especially important on a scooter or a motorcycle because a lot of people don't see you sometimes it feels like we're completely invisible to, to drivers and i think part of that is a lot of drivers look down a road and they go are any cars coming and if they don't see a car they just decide to go instead of asking is anything coming um, so as you are passing intersections, as you're on roads that have left turn lanes on coming towards you, look at those drivers. Try to get eye contact with those drivers the best you can. But if you can't get eye contact, use what you have on your, your bike. You've got signals, you've got a horn, and you have a, a high beam. Flash those things if you need to, hit the horn if you need to, just to make sure that you're communicating your position to other drivers. Another thing you want to do is not hide from cars. And when we get up to a turn lane, I'll show you what I mean by that. And you can see in the oncoming left turn lane, there's a white Dodge Caravan that is going to make a turn. I'm in this position in the lane so that I can see them and hopefully they can see me. 
Now, this is a protected turn, so they're going to go before I ever get the chance to. But in the event that this wasn't a protected turn, at least they can see that there's another vehicle directly behind this white car. Um, if I am over here, for example, then I'm hiding behind this white car and I can no longer see that turning vehicle. And there's a chance that when this car goes, they make their turn and slam right into me. That's not what you want, obviously. You definitely want uh, to be seen and to not hide from vehicles. So consider, if you can't see the vehicle, they probably can't see you either. And just a few feet in a lane can make all the difference there. Another thing I like to do on the freeway, this isn't the freeway, this is 82nd Avenue, um, is if I'm in the far left lane, I like to kind of sit toward the right of the lane right here. So that a car coming up on my right side, like this one, uh, notices that I'm in the lane and doesn't think that it's an empty uh, space for them to change a lane into. Uh, I feel like if I'm on the far left side of the lane on the freeway, then uh, with a line of cars behind me, I might not be so obvious uh, to a car that wants to make a lane change into my lane. If I push over a little bit, I'm clearly visible in the line of cars, just like uh, the right side of all the cars ahead and behind me, and less of a chance that someone's going to take liberties and come on over. Alrighty, so that is the five keys to the Smith system. Aim high in steering, look down the road, get a good idea of what's coming. Number two, get the big picture scan the sides of the road as you continue to kind of look down 15 seconds ahead of you. Number three, keep your eyes moving. Don't fixate on one thing. Look around, continually scanning, looking for hazards and oncoming situations. Number four, leave yourself an out. Space cushion is your friend. It gives you time to make decisions. And if you have uh, the ability to stay not boxed in, you are in a good position to be able to get out of a situation if one unexpectedly arises. And number five, make sure they see you. Make eye contact with other drivers. Use the tools on your vehicle to communicate with those drivers. Your horn, your lights, your signals. Use all that stuff. Uh, remember to turn them off like I just didn't. And uh, you know, from there, if you can keep those things in mind, you're going to have a lot of space, time, and visibility uh, to hopefully keep you safe and go on a lot of good rides. Thanks for watching the video. These are a little tough to make because uh, kind of looking for actual real-life situations that don't always pop up while I'm recording. But uh, you can Google more stuff about the Smith system if you'd like. There's a lot of videos out there. They're mostly going to be based around semi-truck driving um, because that's, uh, like I said, who what they were originally intended for. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of this beautiful, nice winter day uh, where we're approaching 60 degrees. Unbelievable. Thank you all for watching. We will see you in the next video. This is Andrew at Vespa Portland. Take care. On the way home to do the edit, just came upon this HD supply truck. That's the company I worked for. Um, and that driver is probably following the Smith system, or at least I hope he is. All right, take care.